parsley, sage, rosemary, but no thyme. And this is a recipe for people who have no thyme, T-I-M-E, because it goes together very quickly. These herbs are going to be mixed with boneless chicken thighs. Juicy, meaty, and they cook in a little time. So here we have our herbs again. And I'm going to take off the stems now, but you know, sometimes I use these, like when I'm making sauce. And I want to just chop up the parsley. I'm gonna fold that up a little bit because it's a lot easier. Mince this up. And this dish is something that my family really loves, especially on a day when you don't have a lot of time. Because put the whole thing together, you pop it in the oven, 35 minutes later, it's done. So get those herbs mixed up. You notice that I am mincing up the herbs by hand and not using a food processor because I don't want to I don't want to destroy the oils. And sometimes, you know, when you put things in food processors, the the heat of the blade uh, is not good for that, especially for things like dough. So I'm going to stick that right in here. This is the dish that I'm going to bake my chicken in. So you do all the clean things first. So you do this part first before you deal with the chicken. So here is the sage. And if you've never worked with sage, sage has the smell of the woods. It's very forestry. That's the only way I can explain it. It's a great herb that northern Italians like to use. This is an herb that they actually deep fry, like in a tempura batter or a beer and flour batter, and then they serve it as an antipasto with just a little coarse salt over the top. So sage is great for that. It's also used a lot in stews, slow braised uh, roasts. So there is our sage. That is exactly two tablespoons, though that goes in. And now we have delicate rosemary. So rosemary, you know, is one of those, it's the herb of memory. Did you know that? The herb of memory. So you want to take that right off the stem. And just we're just going to give that a quick pass of the knife because it really doesn't need much. And I grow this in my garden. And then I, I bring my plant in in the winter because I live in a cold climate and you just can't Rosemary will not winter over, but if you live in a warm climate, of course, this is, grows like a bush all over. So there's the rosemary, and we're going to give that. And everything is smelling just absolutely beautiful. Okay, so we want two tablespoons of rosemary. We want to get that stem out of there. If you don't like these herbs, you can substitute something else. You could use basil if you wanted to. You could use cilantro, but then it wouldn't really be Italian, would it? All right, and there we have the three, the three musketeers of the herb department. So now I want to clean this off. Yeah. And wipe up that board. Keep things clean in the kitchen. Okay, now we need also the zest of a lemon. So get yourself a little zester and zest your lemon right in there. Love this tool. I always say there are two things you need to have in your refrigerator at all times. Lemons and a wedge of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. You can do a lot just with those two ingredients. Okay. This is just taking the zest off, not the pith, because the pith, the white stuff underneath, is much more bitter than the zest, so you just want the zest. Okay, that's good. And now we want, oh, a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. This is becoming our marinade now. We need a smidge of salt, because those herbs are going to do their work. We need a grinding of black pepper. And I like to use a grainy mustard with this. You can find grainy mustard anywhere in the grocery store. 
or you could make your own. If you go to the Chow Italia website, we actually have a recipe on how to make grainy mustard. Okay, so you mix this all around. See? You just get it mixed really, really well. And I'm using the same dish that I'm going to bake the chicken in, saving myself another dish to have to clean. All right, so that's all ready. So you've made the marinade. You just set that aside. Now, folks, we must do a surgical procedure. Put on my surgical chicken gloves. Okay. I'm going in. So we want to get the chicken thighs. Here they are. Okay. Cold, fresh, nice and plump. And the first thing we want to do is put down one of those plastic mats that you use for raw meats. This one is for chicken. And you take it and you put it on the mat. Look how beautiful these are. These are boneless. Boneless chicken thighs. And they're just really good. They're inexpensive too. They're not, they're not real expensive. All right, so there they are. And now we want to pat them dry. Just put a paper towel over them because you want the marinade really to stick. Now, you could get this whole thing ready at this point. We're going to put them in the pan and you could refrigerate it until you're ready to cook. So now, and by wearing the gloves, of course, prevents me from having to go wash my hands. All right, so now we take these show you how this goes. We take these and we put them right in there, kind of upside down, skin side down rather. Your oven is on at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So once they're like that, I just kind of massage them a little bit and I turn them over several times in that marinade. Okay? All those herbs, spread it around. This is why it's good to wear the gloves because then you, you, know, you keep your hands clean and you have a little bit more control with that marinade. So each one, I tell you that mustard with this is really, really good. It just kind of spices this whole thing up. It's so easy. There, that's all there is to it. So we're gonna put this in the oven, 350 degrees, and take these off, because now I have clean hands. And we're going to bake this at 350 for about 35, 40 minutes, or until an instant read thermometer registers 165 in the thickest part of the meat. And while that is baking, we're going to make a really luscious fruit salad with herbs.